Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, trust everything's going well with each one of you. Uh, let's begin this time uh, with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead in prayer before we begin. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day as you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to start this day with learning from your word, oh Lord, Lord, give us knowledge and give us, give us your guidance, Lord. Lord, we need the Holy Spirit, Lord, because in Proverbs 1, 7, it is written, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, Lord. Give us your fear, fear and Lord, give us your understanding so that we can understand each and everything, each and every concept which is being taught by Sir, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask everything. When God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sid. Uh, okay, so let's begin with our class today. Uh, so last week, we completed on the evangelist, right? So we looked at uh, those wonderful aspects of being the evangelist, uh, Jesus as our example. We looked at how uh, evangelism was in the early church, right? And we looked at a lot of examples as well, uh, how in the early church, God called out people to be evangelists to bring out and share the gospel with uh, with, this, with you know with cities and nations and nations. So, uh, and then we looked at how in the early church there was a restoration of the ministry of the evangelist. Right. So there were there was a time and phase during the dark ages when everything was just stopped. Right. There was no ministry. Uh, there was no preachers, there was no word, uh, but there was a restoration. God restored it back. And, and we looked at a few examples as well, uh, post the Dark Ages, how uh, God brought people and raised up people you know, uh, uh, to, to really bring the gospel out. And uh, we saw that um, restoration, right? Uh, what, restoration simply means something that was dead is being brought back to life, right? And God used wonderful, wonderful men of God, uh, you know, uh, George Whitfield, John and Charles Wesley, and the list goes on, great John G. Lake, and uh, such wonderful men of God who, uh, you know, had the heart of an evangelist, and they went and they reached out, and many of them also to the point of, you know, losing their lives for the sake of the gospel. Um, and it's such a joy to learn all of this. And uh, you know, like I mentioned last week, uh, do take time to, you know, probably choose somebody uh, that you would like to study on. Uh, it could be anybody, and spend time on, uh, you know, reading and learning from their lives. Right now, I want to make sure that I share this. You know, uh, men, as men and women, we we will fall. Right? We will fail in certain areas of our life, uh, but that's why we, you know, the the topics uh, everywhere you see Jesus as our evangel, as our, you know, example. So, in whatever we do, right, uh, uh, you know, we should keep Jesus as our example. Right, we learn from people, but Jesus is the one who we can look up to. Finally, we want to be like Him. Right, uh, and so it's wonderful that uh, you know. I hope, not sure how many of you here uh, want to be full-time evangelists, uh, but I hope uh, you know this. This has really struck your heart, and uh, you know, just encourages you to uh, reach out and do the work in the ministry of the evangelist. Right. Um, so we will move from this. Any questions? Uh, uh, before we go to the next part of this course, which is Ministry of the Teacher. Any questions? OK. All right, so let's go into chapter 6, if you have your notes with you. Uh, chapter 6, the teacher and Jesus as our example. Now I'm going to ask you a question. What is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say teacher? Right, just naturally, right? Normally, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say teacher? Maybe some of us can share. When I say the word teacher, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? School. 
school <laughs> yeah that's right thank you john what else what else when you say teacher what is it what is it that comes to your mind say Rick. yes go ahead roslyn sorry i didn't get that strict discipline strict and disciplined okay what else Sally said some somebody educated mm. somebody who's very educated okay Lubega says a facilitator a trainer uh educator and a guide okay Jafina says a picture of my favorite teacher okay yes anybody else yeah go ahead Sid. so when we talk about teacher it is like a secondary parent to a person who is like uh, who will guide us teach them and mentor them like okay. kind of a mentor. yeah thank you thank you said yeah uh, a secondary teacher okay all right that's all right that's all all, all wonderful zeli says a mentor right okay so the first thing that comes to my mind when i say teacher is uh, just like what john said is school right uh because it is i'm sure all of us have gone to school right and we have different kinds of teachers right uh teachers who you know who are strict different styles of teaching right there are you know if you see like five different teachers if you think of five different teachers in your school all of them would have had a different essence in their teaching or all of them would have had different styles of teaching right or uh, some of them would have loved stories some of them would have just you know stuck to the teaching material and those are the ones which are kind of boring and you know you have those who will explain something and then slowly bring in what they want to talk about um, and so like this we have different kinds of teachers but today we're going to be talking about jesus as our example of a teacher right uh, sid says yeah, a teacher plays an important role in a pe person's life after parents yes because you know uh, if you're thinking about school or college, we spend most of our uh, days, most of the hours of our day in school and college. And, you know, uh, it's where we learn everything. And that's why, you know, as, as a parent, uh, I want to make sure that my child is in a good school, right? So that the teachers train them, there's character building, uh, and it shapes a person, right? Now, we know that the scripture teaches us that Jesus was a wonderful teacher. Right? Uh, did he go to any school of uh, you know learning? Well, we don't know, right? We know that he was he was just trained by the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, but what you know? I remember that portion in scriptures where Jesus was you know uh, teaching the people, and the Pharisees came and said, "Where did this guy? Who's this person?" You know, speaking with such wisdom, with such authority, where did he go and learn? Where did, where did he get his learning from? Right now, before we go into this, let me just give you a little bit of a background. Right now, during Jesus's time, uh, all through the Old Testament, no, uh, there were scribes. Right. So, what would the scribes do? They would scribes would sit and make copies of the Bible, right? So, uh, of whatever scriptures. It was. So, they would they would make copies. Ezra was a scribe. Nehemiah also took up, uh, you know, uh, portions of writing. Now, over time, right? Uh, for that, you know, when when um, during the time of Elijah, there was a school of prophets. Meaning, there was people who had come to learn about prophecy. Now in a day and age that we are in we have so many tools right uh, to learn the prophetic and to learn so many things from the scriptures but during that time itself right Elijah's time you remember there were there were people who did not bow i think it was 500 odd prophets who did not bow to uh, ahab and uh, the idols of uh, uh, of 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 uh, israel at that time and what were they doing they were all studying about prophetic so over the years what happened was there were establishments or, or, or we can say schools that were formed and by the time the during the during jesus's time there were many 
teachings, right? Like we are in Bible college now. There were many places where people were teaching about the scripture, teaching about the Old Testament, teaching about Judaism. Uh, there was teachings about, you know, the sacrifices and all like, you know, like how we are learning. There were a lot of, lot of teaching. And we know this because even Apostle Paul says he was studied under Gamaliel. So he went, he studied under Gamaliel. He learned about Judaism, and he, uh, you know, that's why he was able to, you know, uh, understand so many things about God. So this whole thing of schools was not something uncommon during Jesus' time. Only thing they were not called a school, right? But there was teaching sessions. There were people who were, you know, learning uh, the Word of God. So now. The people are asking Jesus, where did you learn your, did he go to any kind of teaching? So what they would usually do is the Pharisees were in charge of, you know, building people, right? So they would equip the people. Uh, they were in charge of the sacrifices, the Levitical offerings, all of those things. They were in charge. The Sadducees were in charge of, uh, you know, the, you know, the legal matters. Right, the Sanhedrin, they would go and sit there and make sure that, you know, as Jews, everything is going on right. If people had a problem, they would, you know, sit together and and they were like lawyers, right? So, uh, so you got these two kinds of people, and they are wondering, where did Jesus get this wisdom from? Right, which means what? He was speaking something that was new. To the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? It's, they, they, say they didn't hear it. Uh, they didn't. This is the first time somebody speaking with such knowledge, with such wisdom. And they asked, "How? How is it this man knows so much?" Right? Uh, and we know that you know Jesus was trained by the Holy Spirit. But let's look at the teacher and how Jesus set a beautiful example for us uh, as being the most amazing teacher now some of us may in our you know here may say okay i'm not a teacher i'm a pastor or i'm i've just called to be a prophet or i'm called to be a worship leader right and we looked at it uh, last week right the holy spirit can give us different opportunities he can take us and you know open doors for us in places where we may not be comfortable with and and then, and he helps us to do better than what we are doing right now. So we never put God in a box and say, okay, this is what I am. There will come a time. Each one of you will teach the word of God to people. Now, it, the settings could be different, right? It, it, some of you may be teaching in Bible college. Some of you may be just teaching in a life group or a small group setting. Some of you may be teaching in the church. And uh, it could be in you know just teaching or mentoring one person, but all of us will be taking up this role as a teacher. And so, as a teacher, it's very important to understand and know what we are saying, right? Now, for example, you know, uh, how many of you uh, just opening up this question, you know? Uh, you sit in a class and the teacher is speaking and you know that teacher has not prepared. We can make out right at times. Right? We can, at least I can. I mean, if I'm sitting in a class, uh, you know, many times we sit, uh, sometimes we sit for, you know, sessions or, and if there is somebody who's teaching or preaching, right, and, and we're looking at them, we can, we can identify whether they are prepared or not. It's the body language, it's the authority, it's how they are speaking, how how is their sentence construction, everything, right? So especially a teacher can identify another teacher, right? But I think most of us can. We can, when we are looking at somebody and we see that that person has, you know, is teaching, uh, we can know, okay, hey, this person has prepared. This person I think is not, not prepared much. Uh, you know, and yeah, confidence of speech. Yeah, thank you, Sid. So all of this matters. So let's look at Jesus. Let's look at a few examples. 
and see how Jesus exemplified this whole aspect of being a teacher, right? We'll, there's a lot of verses there. Let's just pick up a few, right? Uh, so if all of you have your Bibles open, that'll be helpful. Uh, so we can just, you know, quickly look at uh, maybe five, six chap verses from here. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Uh, any one of us can read that. And Matthew 9, 35, somebody else can read. Let's go ahead. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, anybody else? Nine thirty-five. Matthew nine thirty-five. Matthew chapter nine, verses thirty-five. Jesus went through all the town and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Yeah. Thank you, Sid. So we see such a wonderful like in both the places we see something common now they're not at the same place right this is a pattern that jesus followed matthew 4 23 it says jesus went throughout galilee teaching in their synagogues one is teaching right two is preaching and three is demonstration of the power and the holy spirit Right now, by this, we must understand there's a difference between teaching and preaching. Right? There is a difference. Now, I'm sure all of us have got opportunities to teach and preach. How many of us can say teaching is easier than preaching or preaching is easier than teaching? Right? Maybe any of you can share. How, how many of us feel confident in teaching? And how many of us feel confident in preaching? Can somebody share? Any of you? Just want to leave it open so that we can, you know, just discuss. It's very interesting. I would like to hear your thoughts as well on this. Sid, what do you think about teaching and preaching? What, what is the difference? Like, what do you feel? So, so yeah. So, the teaching is easier because, like, when a person is teaching, he is more like uh, when a preacher is there. Sometimes in church, we feel like preacher will be preaching something, and some people might be get offended. But teaching is a kind of a simple way. Um, meaning, like when Jesus used to teach, he used to use parables, which people can relate easily. Mm. Yeah, that's that's nice. Thank you for sharing, Sid. John says uh, he thinks teaching is easier. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Yes, Lubega, go ahead. Uh, to me, I think a teacher basically deals with the intellectual need of the learners. Mm. And when it comes to preaching, it really deals with the spiritual need of those who are listening to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, it's a nice uh, thought there, Dubega. Thank you so much. Yeah, teaching is more of the intellectual and preaching is more of spiritual is what you feel okay anybody else would like to share uh, what what do you think now for example I, i'll say okay uh, matthew chapter 4 the temptation of jesus christ right uh, so that whole episode you talk about you know i'll give you an option you have to teach it and preach it right so which one do you think is going to be easier teaching it or preaching it what what, what you feel now it's not like uh, you know the reason I'm asking this is not to you know confuse you or say okay preaching is better and teaching is more difficult or vice versa. What I'm trying to get at is just to hear your thoughts on you know how it is to be prepared as a teacher, right? Uh, so uh, yes, go ahead. Anybody? <laughs> yes, Lubiga. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, they look like uh, almost the same thing in, in different ways. Mm. But um, to me, as since I've been a teacher for almost now 20 years, mm. I know 
and, and I've preached sometimes, but a teacher needs to prepare more. He goes into detail. He, he is like a doctor. He needs to put on his microscopes to go into, things into details. Yet preachers usually pass over. They just pass out. You don't need, really need to understand. You just need to get a punchline and you go when you're like in preaching. But when it comes to teaching, you might even go word by Let me put it this way. When If you're going to talk about a given passage, in, in the preaching, you're going to take a passage as a whole. But as a teacher, you will likely go to pass through word by word, over by yeah. verse, to make sure that people really understand the message behind. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you so much, Lubega. Uh, you know, Lubega's got experience as a teacher for 20 years, and he said it right. I think even I, I echo what Lubega is saying. I think teaching, right, it, it's got to deal with more preparation, right? Now, I remember, uh, just an example, uh, you know, I have preached in many places, right? Uh, in my early days, I used to preach, right? No problem. Suddenly, somewhere in the year 2013 or 14, uh, I was asked to teach in the Bible college. So this, you know, this course. Uh, now, all of a sudden, everything changes, right? Uh, right? I can't preach. I have to teach. Like how Lubega said, I need the microscope. I need to go into God's word, and I need to see what is the word saying. Right? So, for example, temptation of Jesus Christ. We can preach it, right? It's wonderful, right? Now, remember, this is the word of God. It, whether we teach it, preach it, it has power, right? Uh, but if you're teaching, preaching about the temptation of Jesus Christ, you can say, you know, after baptism, God took uh, God the Father. He took Jesus there, and you know, the enemy is always there. He even tried to attack, uh, you know. So, we can get people stirred up, encourage people. And that's wonderful, right? But in teaching, you can't do that. Because you need to get into the word. You need to really see what is happening there. Right? One after baptism, he's gone into temptation. So we need to think, okay, as teachers. So after baptism, after we surrender our lives to God, the enemy will come. Right? It's he will bring temptations. And then the, you go in deep. Okay. Jesus is giving a response to the devil. Where are these responses from? Is it his own thinking? No, because the Bible says in, in response, Jesus is saying, it is written. So where is it written? Now a teacher will go back and check. Okay, Deuteronomy 8 has all those responses. Right? So I think as a teacher, we have to be able to spend a lot of time in God's word. And this is what Jesus did. What did he do? He went throughout Galilee teaching, right? So he said, okay, this is what the scriptures did. Probably he went to Moses. He said, this is what happened. But Moses went in. Do you think God was not there? So he's teaching them the scriptures. He's teaching them about Isaiah, right? Remember, he goes into the temple. He opens the scrolls. And he finds the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. But now it's easy, right? We open Isaiah, okay, open the book of Isaiah. But there he had to find the place. And he found the place. And he read the, the, the word, spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, for teaching, it's obvious that Jesus would have prepared himself because he's the best teacher, right? Nowhere he would have you know, just uh, gone half-heartedly and thought, because he's going to the synagogues. Now, he's not, he was not intimidated by the Sadducees, the Pharisees, but he knew that what he teaches must go through their hearts. Right? It, they must be able to understand it. And I think that is also a very important part of a teacher. It's not about our eloquence of speech and how we speak, our style or all of those things, but we must make sure that the people who are listening to us is able to understand what we are teaching, right? And Jesus did that. First thing he did was he thought, that's interesting, no? Why didn't Jesus go, form the miracle, and then teach and preach? Why didn't he do that? Why didn't Jesus 
you know just do the miracle and okay okay god has healed you you know do well in all you do and just go back home no there was a reason he taught them teaching and teaching the word of god really goes deep into our spirit right there are times we may forget many sermons of preaching right but teaching is something that really stays inside us right and jesus did that he taught from the word of god he taught the people the israelites remember it's 400 years of silence john the baptist has come he's baptizing people uh the baptism of repentance and now jesus has come now it's like these people 400 years they don't know anything right 400 years they don't know what is the probably the feast of the tabernacles they don't know about you know the levitical offerings they don't know about moses they don't know about anything that's happening about sin why we must be faithful to god they're just living their life so jesus realized that i need to teach them first i can't just be going about doing miracles because people will come take the mir receive their miracles and go but it's the word of god that needs to be a seed in their heart right because 400 years right now think about this one generation has gone second generation has gone third generation has gone i'm doing what my father is doing what my father is doing nothing so i'm also doing nothing i'm just working providing for my family all they say is go once in a year and give some blood of the lamb give it to the temple and the priest will throw it i don't know why they're doing it but they said do it so do it so what's happened it's become a ritual and now the lord jesus is trying to teach them now i'm just giving an example right it's not like he's teaching only the offerings but i'm just giving you that example right uh and yeah rosalind says preaching is what to do teaching is how to do that what to do okay that's nice Rosalind. thank you right preaching is what to do teaching is how to do that right and so this must be our example as well our model where we say okay let me teach the word of god then preach and then follow that up with signs miracles and wonders right now some of us may be saying but i don't know much i don't know what to teach listen the holy spirit is our teacher it is wonderful that you all have joined this and course and there is many you know uh, things online as well so much available online but if the holy spirit is your teacher he will bring forth ways and methods to teach that will impact people's lives right and jesus did that he did not go to any you know learned pharisee or sadducee sit under them and learn no the holy spirit right and what is the encouragement that you and i have it is the same holy spirit that worked in jesus that's working in us right so let's look at a few more verses luke sorry mark chapter 4 verse 1 i know there may be repetitions but let's read that mark chapter 4 verse 1 anyone else can read mark 1 21 and 22 mark chapter 4 and verses 1 again jesus began to teach by the lake the crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into the boat and sat in it out the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge yeah thank you uh, Sid. Uh, anyone else can read mark 1 21 and 22 mark 1 21 and 22 mark 1 21 and 22 and they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes mm. you see that uh, that's a wonderful verse there for the first one we read mark 4 1 and again jesus began to teach by the lake and the crowd was so much that jesus got into the boat 
and he began to teach them. Now, why was the crowd so much? They came to listen to Jesus. There was something in his teaching that attracted people. Right? And we look at uh, you know, some of the ways and methods that Jesus, or the nature of Jesus' teaching. But there was something that crowds came to listen to his teaching. Right? Uh, the next verse we read, uh, Mark 1, 21 and 22, he went into the synagogue and taught the people, and the Sadducees were astonished. They were surprised. What kind of teaching is this? How is this man teaching this way? And he's not intimidated, but he's talking in authority. Right? Who's this man? You know, in, uh, I think a few chapters later, it goes on. They say, isn't he the carpenter's son? Where did he get his learning from? Right? So the nature of Christ's teaching method, right? Let's look at those points. One of the principal features of Christ's teaching was authority. Right? Matthew chapter 7, verse 9. Right? I think we already read it quite a few verses but let's read that Matthew 7 and 9 7 and verse 9 yes anybody can read Matthew chapter 7 and verses 9 which of you if his son asks for bread will give him a stone or if, or if he asks for a fish will give him a snake. Hmm. Now, this is talking about judging others, right? Actually, much previous on, previous to this, uh, the woman was caught with adultery and they wanted to stone her, right, to death. Remember that? Uh, I think it was chapter five before, a couple of chapters before. And Jesus got this opportunity and he began to teach them. Why are you judging other people? And this is in response to that event. He says, if any of you, have you know you have a child what does it say there sorry verse 9 which of you if your son asks for a bread will give him a stone or a snake nobody is going to do that right so you see here jesus is speaking in such authority he's telling them hey you are judging other people right you're you're saying okay you, this woman was caught in adultery moses said kill him but who are you to judge them how can you judge this person that I have forgiven? Now, if your son or your child, you see the wisdom, see the authority he's speaking. If your son or your child does something wrong and comes back to you, will you forgive them? Or if they ask for bread, will you give them a stone or a snake? What would you do? So the answer was obviously not. I'm not going to judge my own son or my own daughter. Uh, but I'm going to bring correction in a loving manner. Plenty of other places as well. I love the the event that happened. Where, you know, they tried to trap Jesus in the book of Luke. They said to Jesus, "Okay, Jesus, we are paying taxes to the Roman government, and now these tax collectors are here. They are the worst people to have lived to be living right now because they're taking our hard-earned money." and giving it to the Roman government as tax. Now, you tell me, should we pay taxes or no? And, and you see the authority. You, Jesus is not like, okay, you come back to me tomorrow. I'll just think about it and tell you. Right? Immediately, there, there's authority in his teaching. He says, hey, give me a coin. Whose face do you see on it? Uh, uh, pilots. So give to... Uh, sorry, Caesar. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. There was authority in his speech. Think about the examples that he used on faith. That he said, hey, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move these mountains. Right? Now, I'm sure they would have had so many questions. God, Jesus, what are you talking how how would I have faith as a mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds? Now, if I have say, if you know, faith as a mustard seed, how can I move the mountain? 
Look at that mountain, how big it is. And look at me, I'm just a speck of dust in front of that mountain. But they did not understand what Jesus was trying to say. He spoke in authority, right? There was this authority. And also when we see his, you know, we talked about that also at right? previous classes, how the Lord Jesus, when he went about, demons recognized his authority. People recognized his authority. Now, here's one interesting thing, that uh, interesting fact that I read. During uh, Jesus' time, it was mostly people who were Pharisees who would were allowed to go and read from the scriptures. Right? Mostly it was. Uh, and Jesus went there with authority because he knew what he was teaching. He knew that his teaching is not from here, but it's of heaven. Right? So when you and I teach with authority, we are basically standing on not our own ability. Huh? Oh, I've prepared for one hour. So when I teach this half an hour session, I know I'll do well. No. We're standing on the authority of God's word. Say, God, I have done my part of preparing. But you reveal your power that is the authority that is there in the word of God. Even as it is released, let it touch people's lives. Let them be transformed. And that is what that's how Jesus did it. He taught, he preached, and after that there were signs, miracles, and wonders. So you and I must expect it. Right? Even as we teach, it's not like okay, oh, one session over. No. Right? Oh, okay, what is the next session? Who's next? Okay, which pastor's class is next? That should not be our attitude. Right? Our attitude should be, God, I'm going to sit. And maybe if, if you're, you will get an opportunity to teach, your attitude should be, sh you should not have the attitude of saying, you know, oh, when will this Bible college get over? When are the you know, semester breaks? Don't have that attitude. Be excited. Right? Uh, last week we ended with, you know, characteristics of an evangelist i think it is for everybody maintain a passion for god's word and maintain a passion for souls right so we have to do that right we have to uh speak in authority now how can we speak in authority it's because we have to prepare well we should know what the word of god is we must know that the word of god carries the power and what it's capable of doing then you can speak in authority right everyone with me Yes. Yes, Pastor, we are with you. Okay, okay. So another feature, second one, another feature of Christ's method was his love for people. Now, this is a very interesting thing, right? Authority and love is very difficult to put together. No? Usually we, when we say authority, what is the first thing? Can, oh, leader, right? strict, somebody who has power. But Christ's method of teaching, there was authority, but it was out of love, right? Uh, and and uh, and and without love, if we if we are preaching in authority and we don't love the people, we're teaching, preaching, whatever, and we don't love the people, we don't want to see their lives transformed. It's just going to be a show, right? Now, for example. You know, if I have taught this whole semester, right, I've done my best, spoken in authority, but if I don't, if I have a, you know, grudge against any of you as a student, I cannot expect the word of God to, you know, minister to you much because, I mean, you know, you get what I'm saying. The I'm not operating out of love. Now, here's important, right? Jesus operated out of love. Right, uh, the love of Christ, the love of Jesus. You know, remember this, right? Many places he taught. Then what did Jesus do? I, I love that, you know, that episode where the lepers. Jesus is going towards Samaria. The lepers come, and this leper comes and says, "God, Lord God, if you are willing, you can cleanse me." He was moved. Every time I read that, I am moved because you see this leper 
was not supposed to be outside his territory but he came out searching for Jesus and Jesus knew what was happening right Jesus could have said hey you're a leper no you should not be out of your you have a leper's territory outside of the city go back there I'll you know he doesn't say all of that he doesn't say you know you are a sinner this leprosy has come because of your sins maybe your father your grandfather your generation all sinners you're all worship worshiping idols and now you're ended up in this I don't want to come near you also you don't see all that right what does he say out of love he says I am willing I'm willing to do this remember the example of the parable of the lost son I always picture this when I read it imagine I was sitting in that crowd listening to the Lord Jesus I, I always say right when you read your Bible imagine don't let it be something that we're just reading and imagine it picture it in your mind so I always picture okay Jesus is teaching there are people who are lost in their life they've lost their loved ones or they have no identity they don't know what they're doing in life they're living in sin they're fearful God is you know they know about God but they're not able to you know fulfill the law of God they're broken they are hurt inside and now Jesus is teaching and he's talking about the parable of the lost son picture this right the, the son he's, he's just explaining the whole story and there's so much of love in that story right that you know I'm sure I'm sure that many of them would have turned back to God after that sermon right after that wonderful teaching said so much so how much more your father in heaven that when you call back call unto him will he not come back will he not accept you the way you are you see that teaching out of love now Jesus does not teach and say okay you all you know why are you all behind me you're all you know you're all lost first go read the book of Isaiah read the book of uh, you know read about Elijah and Moses and all of them and then you come at least get some background and come no no he doesn't do that he teaches out of love right and uh, in many places it is because of that love that he has brought so many people healed so many people restored people right so remember this when we are teaching as leaders learn to love the person that you are you know they, they may have many faults they may have many failures right uh, they may not be mm, on par with you meaning your understanding of the word may be very high right you still love them you lower yourself to their level right uh, don't say oh you don't know this 10 years you're a believer you don't know this what is this right uh, you don't know what is sozo sozo this is uh, no you don't have to condemn but the ministry of the holy spirit is the ministry of love and power that right? is not condemnation right? and jesus did this beautifully third one his teaching was characterized with wisdom right now we looked at this uh, last last chapters as well last sessions what is wisdom can anybody say tell me what is wisdom what do you think is wisdom yes what is wisdom yes lubega wisdom is the <coughs> Is the intersection between with between knowledge and the and and experience? Oh, that's nice. Okay, is the intersection be, between knowledge and experience? Wonderful. Yes. Inter intersection. Inter intersection. Yes. Intersection. Yes. Intersection between knowledge and experience. Wow. Wonderful. Anybody else? What is what is wisdom?
Anyway, else, what is wisdom? I'm sure all of us have heard of wisdom. Samuel, sorry, uh, King Saul, King Solomon asked for wisdom, right? And he was known as the most wise man. Uh, but what do you think is wisdom? Wisdom is application of knowledge. Okay, uh, I'll just, uh, Rosalind, if you don't mind, I'll just rephrase that. Right? Wisdom is the application of correct knowledge. Okay. okay. Or, or wisdom is the correct application of knowledge. Right. So that's wonderful. Thank you, Rosalind. Anybody else? Right. How many of us want wisdom? All of us, right? All of us want wisdom. Why? Why do we need wisdom? Uh, I just I can just know Genesis to you know Revelations, know about these deep truths of the Word of God, you know, and just be the best teacher. But why do I need wisdom? And I think to answer that question, uh, Lubega and Rosalind gave perfect, beautiful uh, explanations of what wisdom is. It is the intersection between knowledge and experience. Now, wisdom is also gained through experience. Right? It's not, uh, you know, usually they say, no, when your hair turns gray, you're full of wisdom. No, you can have full of gray hair and have zero wisdom. Right? It's got nothing to do with wisdom. Right? So wisdom is about applying the knowledge in the right way. Right? And wisdom is also learning through life experiences. Okay, Abu Bakr says, wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Wonderful. Right? Now, Jesus characterized this teaching with wisdom. Right? There was experience. There was appropriate use of the knowledge that he had. Right? And he had sound judgment. And again, there are plenty of places where the Lord Jesus spoke with such wisdom. Right? Uh, you, you know, sometimes when you think of his sayings, you feel, God, Lord, why didn't you just say it in the normal way? But there was wisdom in that. Before Abraham was, I am. I said, okay, get rid of this guy. How can he be before Abraham? Abraham is hundreds of years before. What is he talking about? Right? And you know, he they wanted to get rid of, they wanted to kill him there. Right? And then he again goes on to say in another place, he says, before this, yeah, previous to this, you know, uh uh I'm the true temple. Is that what he says? Yeah, he says, right. Uh, destroy this temple in uh, three days, and I will destroy this temple and I will rebuild it on three days. Again, full of wisdom, right? But they never got it. And the Pharisees and Sadducees were thinking this guy is foolish. And here's the beautiful part: the our foolishness. When, you know, when we are usually when we are teaching and preaching the word of God, we may look foolish, but what we are doing is we are talking of the wisdom of God. We are talking the wisdom of the cross. Right? Uh, so when people look at us, hey, what is he talking? It's so foolish, but no, it's the wisdom of God. Now. We must also, and I can give you plenty of examples, uh, maybe after the break, I'll give you a couple of examples of how these great leaders, because of, you know, they knew everything. I mean, they're so powerful in the word and teaching, preaching, everything. Because of lack of wisdom, the whole ministry sunk. See, their life was totally, you know, gone because no sound judgment, no wisdom. Knowledge, it's there. It's still there. They know everything. No wisdom. Right? We'll come back. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. Come back and we'll give you a couple of examples. Then we'll go and study on Christ parables. Right? Let's take a break. We'll be back. Thank you. <laughs> 